Hello, Bill. <clears throat> hey. Good to see y'all. Doing doing well. How about you? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Doing all right. It's lovely up here. I don't know if Tom will be here today or not. He this is his last day or week in San Francisco. He said he had a lot of stuff to do returning car. His he ran mm. an electric car while he was there. And what'd yeah. you say, Mike? Yeah. Hi guys. Hey, Mike, Hello, wow. Mike. Man, nice skyline. <laughs> that was a sunset out in Parker where I used to live mm -hmm. about ten or twelve years ago. Really pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we know we just got on. Um, Tom, Tom and I talked, and we decided just to start doing them at four instead because sometimes I log in at three thirty, and about five minutes to four is when people started showing up. So we said <laughs> we'll, we'll just start doing it at four instead. And, four o'clock your time? Yeah, four o'clock my time. I guess that's well two years. Yeah, so, well. You're in New Orleans, so that'd be three o'clock my time. That's the same time, right? Yeah. You three. Oh, no, New Orleans, Orleans clock. <clears throat> no, you're not the same time as New Orleans. You're an hour. Uh, well, yeah, I'm three o'clock right you're, now you're, in New Orleans. Yeah, I'm three o'clock. You're, you're four o'clock right now, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's not going to change then. Uh -oh. oh yeah, no. Uh, no, we just yeah, <laughs> just we were getting on a half hour early, three thirty our time, for a while. Um, there was, uh, some, some guys from the new Orleans club used to like to chit chat for a while before the meeting started, but then it kind of started dwindling and, you know, nobody was showing up very early. So we just decided to do it, um, uh, at four, you know? Okay. I guess I never knew it was starting early for a while. I always thought it was three o'clock, but that's okay. No big deal. Yeah. You just you didn't say anything. Yeah. Now nah, we usually just... <laughs> We we shoot talk about stuff we don't want recorded, you know. <laughs> yeah. So and, Bill and Barry, y'all y'all doing anything with Mardi Gras? Uh, I'm done. No, I don't do any Mardi Gras. I took the grandkids to a parade in Slidell. That was it. That's it. Good. If the weather's nice, I might take the grandkids to one out in Metairie this weekend. Yeah. That's only if the weather's nice. Right now it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's another okay. parade in Slidell, which Slidell is real easy for me to get to with the grandkids. And it's a real family oriented area. You know, it's not not much. of a, The parade isn't nearly as nice as New Orleans, but um, it's easy to get to. And, you know, you don't have to worry about the kids as much, you know. Well, it's in the 40s right now. But That's guess right. what? Guess what? Um, Mardi Gras Day is supposed to be in the 80s. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. One thing I like about that is the costumes are really fabulous when it's hot weather down here. <laughs> In the quarter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now I can remember going for years, we'd go like clowns because you could wear just about anything under the clown outfit. You know, <laughs> you put as many layers of clothes as you want. Because sometimes you're going to be 28, sometimes you're going to be, you know, 50, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And Karen and I used to enjoy on Mardi Gras Day, I guess a handful of times, six, eight times, <clears throat> going down to the quarter early on Mardi Gras Day. Oh, yeah. You know, just kind of walking around for a while. And then, I used to do that every year. Yeah. You know, real early, like seven in the morning. Well, wasn't that early, but yeah. Yeah. Well, eight or nine for, yeah, I guess it was. Yeah. Yeah. And fellas, let me tell you what. Uh, on the Friday before Mardi Gras, like right now, that was the day we started three bands at the Mustache. So Friday at 11 a.m. is when we started three bands. That was the first band, 11 a.m. till 4. And the second band came on 4 to 9. And the third band was 9 o'clock till close. So today would be the day we'd start three bands. Yeah. Yep. Now, I remember... Uh, I remember... Uh, heading down on a fr on that Friday before Mardi Gras and some people wouldn't go home at all. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> you couldn't park down in a quarter. Bonnie would drop me off sometimes on Esplanade and I'd walk like however many blocks that is, 15 blocks <laughs> to yeah. get down to the mustache, <laughs> you know, because you couldn't get in there. You know? Yeah. See, here's, here comes, here's another uh, New Orleans uh, Mardi Gras veteran coming on. <laughs> Hi, 
Howdy, Rick. Who that? Who that? Hello, that's, Rick. That's, that's the wrong season. Wrong season. Throw me something. Yeah. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Yeah. Who that? Didn't you, didn't you have a beard last week? Jesus Christ, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> Got tired of it. Yeah. I'll come and go. I'll probably go again this next fall. Listen, Bill, you're uh, you're running. I'm going to have to leave around about a half an hour. I got to. Pick up Sandra. We're going to Slidell and join the kids for the parade tonight there. Okay. Yeah, I, I told her. It's going to be like about 44 degrees with a 30-mile-an-hour wind. I'm not going. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I should, but we, we are. I mean, it's just – Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I will tell Tom also, I won't be here for the next six weeks. We're doing those Friday afternoon uh, oh. fish fries. Yeah. Fish fries yeah. Here, so I'll be, I'll be doing fish fries and all. Y'all do catfish? Yeah. Yeah, the church got to make some money. That's right. Wouldn't want to send not eat and not eat fish on Friday. Yeah, you're in Lent, Dottie, and I do a different one every Friday night. Do you oh, really? Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> well, they have that many Catholic churches. I mean, there's about five of them within five minutes of our house. Oh, <laughs> they yeah. have they started having them. Yeah. Right, we're starting next. We're starting next Friday. You're gonna go for not doing it Good Friday, but up to then. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's most most of them are really good. The catfish oh, yeah. is good. We have catfish and shrimp, hush puppies, fries. Yeah. They usually give you a little piece of wedge, uh, square of cake too for dessert. You know? Yeah, they have that and drink. Yeah, it's not, not a bad deal. They make some money. No, you know, it's it's, it's um, the night. I mean, the nights of Columbus. We we do the fish fry at our uh, night's hall, and then we it all goes to the church. I tell you who does a good one, Billy. Your your alma mater. You go to Rummel. I went there, yeah. Rummel puts on a good fish fry. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'll, I'll be over there, I guess, soon. <laughs> yeah. We don't have a lot of competition over here. With, I mean, we're the only Catholic church, so that's, you know. Yeah, yeah. see, around here, we got Catholic churches every oh, morning. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even, even here on the North Shore, I mean, we go to, well, we moved. We live close to Mary, Queen of Peace, but now we're closer to Our Lady of the Lake. But there's also uh, the one in Madisonville, uh, Saint Anne's Lake. Saint Anne's Lake. Lake. Lake is that's that real big church, isn't it? They were trying well, to build. Lake, Lake is pretty big. Yeah, it's right by. It's two blocks from Lake Pontchartrain. They were trying to build a new big, big church, new church or something at one time. Or yeah, yeah. Know. They um, let me see. Speaking of which, we got. How was Colorado? Mike. Yeah. yeah, Mike, is it cold? Are you having you cold out there? What? It's Colorado cold right now. Right now, today yeah. it's nice out. Uh, we had we had about six inches of snow a couple of days ago, and and it was it was really cold on Tuesday and Wednesday. But right, it's supposed to be in the high forties and and low fifties for the next five or six days, and some more snow oh. next week. So not a bad well, day today. That's kind of like here, really, for a few days anyway. That's yeah. Today that's, that's a good picture. Who who is the lady in the middle? The lady. Her name is Cynthia Sayer. Yeah. And she uh, used to sub at the New York Club. Hmm. She's a fine, fine banjo player. She'd show up at all the banjo festivals. That's what this is here. Yeah. A banjo festival. And uh, she's a fine player. And But the deal is she didn't play Carnegie with us because she wanted top billing. And Joel said, no, nobody gets top billing except for him. <laughs> she wanted top billing at Carnegie Hall, really. Yeah. Well, she's pretty. She's pretty well known and known out there in the banjo world and and, and music world. Uh, huh. She, I've been familiar with her for years. I've never heard her in person, but well, well, I she's know, very I well played, known. I played with her at that session we were at right there, but, but uh, I know her pretty well. Not well, but I, she knows who I am and I know who she is. You know. Yeah. But she, yeah, she's well, a fine, fine player. And like you said, Mike, she's well respected in the jazz. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's a lot prettier than the banjo players we had. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. Yeah. See, I found this other old picture. Uh, I just, I, I, if I was more prepared, I would have popped in some pictures from Mardi Gras from the mustache. I'd have to go digging mm -hmm. for them. Oh my goodness. That's Denver. Yeah. Oktoberfest in Denver with yeah. Mike Gentry right up front. Yeah. Bruce Wilson on the left and Gentry, then Gene LeBeau and Joe Petrocelli. 
Yeah. Now, see Bruce Wilson? When I started with the mustache, yeah. he was an assistant ma- visiting assistant manager in New Orleans. He and he the one gave me my orientation. Yeah. yeah. Same he probably, yeah. he probably hired you, Rick, because he hired he me. Did. I think Rick and I got hired a day apart from each other. Yeah. 19, February Bruce 1971. Wilson. Yeah. When mm-hmm. LaRue, he and LaRue Co were the co managers, the co assistant right. managers. Kind of. Yeah, David was out with his uh, operation, and yeah. Fred was out of town, and Roger wasn't there. Yeah, Roger, I didn't meet Roger for about the first five or six months I was there. Um, Same here, yeah. But uh, when Fred came back in, he, I guess he said it was okay for me to work there because Wilson had hired me. So. <laughs> Same here. Same yeah. with me. Yeah. Yeah. That was at Mardi Gras 71, and 71, you're probably yeah. the same boat as me. Uh, I went down to apply for the job, and he says, you got black pants and a white shirt? Come back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were gearing up for Mardi Gras. Yeah. Yeah, that was a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, back, back in the day, you know, right now on Friday, Friday afternoon, 4 o'clock, we had a club full. The bands were playing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. On Friday before Mardi Gras, they started at 11 oh. in the morning. So at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. It would have been packed. Yeah. We'd be packed right now. That's right. Oh, yeah. No, f- yeah, starting with Friday night, you're right. Just um, through, through Mardi Gras day. Those five days was nonstop, you know. Yeah, here comes Gim. Yeah. There he is. Jim. Jim. Good afternoon. Hello, Jim. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was digging up some other clips we probably hadn't seen before. Um, this is from the. Let's see if I can get the right one here. Oh, this is from the fiftieth year reunion. Uh, after the concert, um, we had a little get together, a little party, and Joel was giving handing out accolades. Oh, yes. And, um, I, had, I showed a few clips from that before, but this was a story about uh, uh, Joel shared. I don't think I put it up before. And it also goes right into the uh, guy from the Banjo Museum who gave Joel honorary. Um, oh, that's not honor in that. Okay, let me see if I can. First, I got to get to the right place and I'll get it up for y'all. Yeah, let's see. Video. It just takes a few seconds to find it. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Open sesame. There it is. Oh, Lord, yeah, this is sister. He said the last five days with me was better than the last 15 years I'm there. <laughs> All right, we're having this tonight. A variety of people want to say things. Uh, one is Johnny Bear, the chairman. On the Banjo Hall of Fame. Now, the Banjo Hall of Fame went there in infinite wisdom. Anointed me as a member of the Banjo Hall. I was thrown out of town. (laughs) Almost. (laughs) I was out in the height, center of the Bible Belt. Out there. I did my usual routine where at the end of God Bless America I removed my pants. (laughs) I have my red, white, and Blue striped bass. Wow. In the VFW club on Memorial Day in Guthrie, Oklahoma. <laughs> so, they came to me with the lame excuse that some young children were offended. Now, I know the truth. The kids thought it was uproarious. <laughs> the kids weren't at least bit disturbed. A 65, 70 year old guy running around with her speedos. <laughs> but some parent, one of those goddamn Bible belt I love to grab them by the tie. We can't tolerate this up because you're 
He, he gave me a stern tug of Not tonight. I, I want you to know that I am unchaste. <laughs> Jason. Johnny Bear. Just a few words. I bring an objective point of view. You all have personal experience with your father's mustache. I didn't get to play there. But from the outside and from the American Banjo Museum point of view, what you guys did not only changed your lives, it set a course in a chapter of banjo history. And pop culture was affected by all the things you guys did. And that's why Joel, Speedos or not, was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2005. Now, what we're doing here this weekend, we know he didn't do it alone. Did he? Yeah. No. <laughs> and and what, we, what we want to do for both his honor and the fact that you all made that happen and to commemorate another piece of banjo history, which will, I don't know, do you think they built Carnegie Hall for banjo concerts? Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I doubt it'll have ever happen again, but we want to share the Hall of Fame honor with anyone that performed this weekend or was part of your father's mustache in the past by giving you a Hall of Fame pin. So if you haven't already got one, please see me. I'm over here with the uh, uneaten plate of cheese and sauce. <laughs> Congratulations to you all, and long live your father's mustache. That was nice. Yeah, that was real nice. Yeah. That was nice. Yeah. Kim, nice. yeah. have you seen Joel any time lately? Not, not, not in a while. No, I know. I haven't heard. I haven't heard anything from her about him. I got a one-line note the other day about uh, something he was going to send me to, for Christmas and didn't. And uh, <laughs> but uh, but that's that's all. Just a one-line uh, email. That's all. I haven't seen him or heard from him. Connecticut was the last time we all saw him. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. He seemed to be doing well in Connecticut, although the mustache banjo player started by sitting down in chairs on a stage. Then oh, we yeah. made it to standing up. We stand up for a few years, and Joel brought a new twist to it, and he was playing the banjo lying down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Towards, towards the end of the video, uh, Joel was kind of starting to get a little tired while he was playing, and he was in the, we were in the lounge area of the hotel, and Towards the end, he was pretty much reclining and play, playing the last couple of songs. You know? so, yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's going to make the final video though or not, though. <laughs> you know. Well, the guy is eighty-six years old. We got to face that. Face that. Yeah. Face that. We're getting there. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. We got. Uh, here's just. Uh, let's see. Just a nice picture from the, oops, let's see. A nice picture from the uh, old uh, reunion, from the 50th reunion. I was going through that um, earlier today. And, cool, yeah. great picture, great yeah. picture. Yeah. Great picture. Good, pic good picture, guys, yes. Yeah. Anybody know these guys? <laughs> Where is Tom today, incidentally? Tom is oh, San Francisco, San Francisco. Yeah, this is his last day or or weekend in San Francisco. He said he had a lot of stuff to wrap up, and he probably might not be here today. You know, so that's right. He was on. He, was on the road he, had, he has to return. He he rented an electric one of those electric vehicles while he was out there. Oh yeah, he had to, he had to return that to the shop or to the rental place and all that. And um, of course, he was spending a lot of time visiting that new grandbaby. Uh, sure. Let's see. If you rent a you if you rent an electronic electric vehicle and you're starting to run low, what the hell do you do? You're going to find yourself a charging station somewhere. Yeah. Well, Tom told me he had an issue with that. Um, um, he he went to drive his son to, or his 
or his daughter-in-law, I think his son, wanted to go look at a new car. His son was trying to buy a new car. And, uh -huh. and he asked, could he take the electric vehicle? And Tom said it didn't have a full charge on it, but according to the little meter, it had 100 miles on it or something. So he drove down with his son, but they ended up going to a couple of extra places. And he tried to get it charged while he was down there, but they couldn't. So he mm -hmm. said he barely made it back to his son's house when the battery went completely dead. Ooh, um, and so ooh. he had, and he uh, lives up in the hills above San Francisco. Tom is staying in a condo in, in the city. And uh, he said he had to spend the night there and let it charge up before he can go home the next day. Damn. So, so I, I suggested that he get like about a 200 mile electrical cord, but um, you know, <laughs> just keep it plugged in, you know. That is a problem with him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here's Tom right now. Speak of the devil. I was thinking the other day, what are some of the things at the mustache the waiters used to scream at the band, like song titles? And y'all hey remember guys. some of those? Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, Tom. Oh. Better late than never, hey. man. I was, okay. just trying to, I was just trying to get Chris connected from Italy. Oh, um, my. Okay. He says he's having problems getting on, but I. He's still he's still on the list. So I don't know. He was in the first night, the first day he was in. I it know. Was I, that's what I said. Yeah. Um. Hmm. There's some ne'er do wells. Yeah. <laughs> that was. I like all of this picture because uh, I hadn't seen Tom or Kent. I couldn't tell you the last time I saw him, and I, Bonnie and I had just checked in, and I get a call to my room. Come on down to the bar, you know. <laughs> And that, that was good. minutes of seeing them. Of course, we started drinking right away, and the band was playing in the in the lobby. So, All right. it was a great time. Yeah, yeah, I, I love I, I like the playing in the lobby thing. But. Yeah, that's kind of pretty much how most of uh, New Haven was. We played the, they played oh, in, yeah. The, uh, yeah, yeah. in the hotel twice, and then we played in in the everything at the bar, which is where the the name of the place we went was the bar. Um, yeah. They um. Uh, it was very, very uh, laid back, you know, um, you know, not, not, nothing like Carnegie where you, you know, where they had the band was on stage. They were all kind of right down in front of you. So it was very, very, what, what was your question? My question was oh. the waiters used to say stuff like play. I used to kiss on a list, but it's all over now. In other words, yeah. One line. What waiters used to yell. Yeah, yeah, Since I met your sister Enos, I've had trouble with my penis. Oh, that's right. That yeah. my heart. That's the ones I'm talking about. You know, it was, it was hard maybe... when I kissed her goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she kissed him at the station before he went off in his new suit. Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she kissed him in a rowboat as he went off in his new pants. <laughs> He's yeah. only the rancher's daughter, but all the horsemen knew her. Yeah. Oh, that's one, yeah. <laughs> well, she's, she was only a rancher's daughter, but she sure had a nice spread. Yeah. yeah. Or don't wait for wait up, don't wait up for the shrimp boat, Mabel, because I'm coming home with the crabs. Oh, with the crabs. Yeah, that's the stuff. I can't remember those. Oh. <laughs> but uh, her lips said no, no, but there was wee wee in her eyes. Wee wee in her eyes. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and then the waiters, we'd finish a big rousing song, and the waiters would say, more, more, I'm still not satisfied. <laughs> and somebody, then somebody would say, neither is your wife. Those were great. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and here's an outdated one. The the trombone player would do the charge call, da -da 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 and everybody would go charge. And oh, yeah. some waiter would say, on your Bank AmeriCard. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, we don't even call it that anymore. Yeah. Uh, we don't take credit cards there. Bank AmeriCard. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Don't know all that. That, that's interesting. I, I didn't, I, I, as I remember, we never took credit cards, did we? No, no we, we didn't. Did. Yeah, we, did. oh. we never did. No. I don't even think they, did they have credit cards then? Oh, sure. But we I guess they did. They oh, yeah. had them, but we dealt in cash. Cash only. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nobody get nobody ran a tab either. You paid when you, we brought it to you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and all that beer soaked money. I mean, I mean, I remember when we were on the cable, and I had to come to cash every night. 
put it in the safe, and it was all beer soaked money. So I take it to the bank the following day, and it's stinking like crazy. <laughs> they really, they really didn't want to see me down there, but uh, you had to do it. Oh yeah, no, it's um. That... And these days, you pay you you go buy a pack of gum, which is going to cost you a dollar, but you pay for it with a credit card. <laughs> yeah, well, I know. funny, isn't it? Probably yeah. more than a dollar now. <laughs> Yeah, Is I just really? don't like I don't like having change in my pocket anymore. You know, I used to always carry like uh, four pennies in my pocket just in mm -hmm. case I had to buy well, cash for something. I wouldn't have to. Well, when we go to the Saints games at a Champion Square and in the Superdome and all that, no, no cash is taken anywhere. It's all it's all had to take by credit by plastic. Mm -hmm. That's Dead right. If you buy a beer and a, and a hot dog, it's got to be credit card at the game. Mm -hmm. No yeah. cash. So I think the uh, Smoothie King Center is the same for the Pelicans games. I think it's the same thing. And you know what? That that way they avoid theft of all the millions of bartenders and <laughs> oh, really. Wow. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. I yeah. bet they have no theft problems at the dome and at Smoothie King Center because it's totally credit cards now. Everything's debit credit cards. Yeah. I imagine they still can give you free drinks, but they're not stealing the money themselves because there is no cash. No, but I always got I got a I always got a twenty in my pocket for a guy who gives me free drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the same way when we park around in the area, Barry. Same thing. It's, it's all about plastic. Yeah. Yeah, you can't even use cash down there. No. Yeah. Um, well, Tom, before we got on, I played a, a clip from the uh, the old reunion, uh, with Joel getting his honor from the um, banjo museum. Johnny yeah. Bear. Yeah. Johnny Bear. Yeah. So that was that was nice. You know. Let's see what I got. Okay. He's a fine, fine player. Yeah, and a nice oh, guy. Johnny, Johnny, he's a great player. You know, he's 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 very, very good. He yeah, made a, a nice guy too. Yeah, he he made a record with uh, oh, what's his name, a guy from Maryland, the guy uh, Sonny uh, Buddy Walker. Buddy Walker. Yeah, he he's uh, that's really terrific if you've not, if you've never heard it. That that is my favorite banjo CD. That one. Yeah, he he, he they're both extraordinary. Yeah. Well, Johnny's found a home down there at the at Banjo Museum. I mean, you know. Well, he's the perfect person for the gig. Absolutely right. He's articulate, he's knowledgeable, and he plays like hell. So it's, it's a great, great for him. Hey, Barry and Kim, do you remember Tyler Jackson? I know him well. Uh, yeah, he's, the, at, he's in Oklahoma now at the Banjo, at, working at the Banjo Museum. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he, he accepted a job there about three months ago, four months ago. Hmm. Another really nice guy. I imagine when Johnny retires, that's the replacement. More than Thanks. likely. Where where is it in Oklahoma? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. Beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Have to check it out. Looks like it might be we, fun. We did a big reunion there when we uh, fronted for the Kingston Trio. Yeah. Yeah. What, what what year was that? I was trying to think of that the other day. What year do you remember? After Carnegie, I know that. I think it was 2016. Was it that long, that long ago, huh? I don't remember. I think it was after Punta Gorda in Clearwater. I think it was 2016. That would sound about right, yeah. Seven years ago, yeah. Okay. Indeed, that was a great reunion, uh, Mike, because not only did we have mustache people there, but all the Banjo Hall of Fame people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a wonderful that. weekend. It was, Plus, it was a, big concert, upstairs. a big concert front in the Kingston Trio. I mean, a lot of yeah. people, you know, thousands of people. It was great. Yeah, and the last song we did was Oklahoma, and 700 people standing up, <clears throat> screaming and shouting and hollering, and then the Kingston Trio came on behind us. It was a great weekend, a great night. It sounds great. Yeah, we, we opened, yeah I, remember, I remember we opened for the Kingston Trio in their concert, but we, we didn't play nearly long enough, in my view. I thought we quit too soon. But uh, I know the crowd loved us. I, they did indeed. 
I mm. said, we, we, we were just, you know, you were just rounding the first turn. We got in, 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 didn't even make it to the home stretch. But uh, and then suddenly uh, we did the Oklahoma thing and that was it. It was two songs we couldn't play. We couldn't play uh, Charlie on the MTA or Tom Dooley. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, was gonna, I, love, I was thinking Dixie. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> And we couldn't play those two tunes because those were originated by Kingston Trio. Mm -hmm. So oh, you, knew wow. they, you knew they were going to do those songs. <laughs> oh, yeah. it, is, it was interesting because Bob Shane was still alive then. And yeah. he, uh, wow. he, didn't, he didn't play with the, uh, the, uh, the main performance, but he came out and did his own thing. I remember that. Put down his oxygen bottle, came out and played and sang a couple of tunes. It was, it was kind of nice. And you know which one he did? And nobody associates it with Kingston Trio, but uh, Scotch and Soda. Yeah. Remember that? Sure. Nobody <laughs> associates that. I mean, I played that song for dinner jazz at Arno's for years. And people would request it. But sure. nobody associates that song, Scotch and Soda, with the Kingston Trio. Yeah. I got a lot, I got a lot of mileage out of that tune. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Here's another musical clip from the old for, from the fiftieth reunion. Let's uh, get this bigger. Here we go. <laughs> Put a little bit of that stuff up on Facebook from time to time. Yeah, it's simply well, actually, amazing. Actually, I mean, Chris puts a lot of it up. Well, look I who's know. here. Look who's up. Hey, Chris. Bonjour. No. Yeah, yeah. Chris. 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 Hey, Chris. Hey, hey, Chris. 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 <laughs> well, I appreciate it. It's always nice to be in, <laughs> included. <laughs> yeah. Um, oops. It's, oh, it's late here in, in Rome. It's about 1130 at night. Sure. Wow. Shag of the evening. Shag yeah. of the evening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You'll just have dinner, huh? 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> Nobody here starts dinner until like eight or nine o'clock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 What time do they get started during the morning? Uh, I don't get started till about 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect time to start. Hey, Roger. Still... Hey, That's... Roger. How are you doing? That's typical. Oh, right. really to... wow. There I am. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> Bill, Bill, Tom, I haven't hit the road, go to slide air and freeze my ass off. Okay. So, okay, Rick. And I'll Thanks, see Rick. All, Happy see you all the We'll see you all about care, Rick. Stay safe. Okay, take care. See you all in about six weeks. Take care, Rick. Good luck. Okay. Really? Okay. This this little clip I have here was from um, also the 50th reunion. Uh, the guy who helped Joel organize it, uh, was he the hotel manager, Joe Sakala, or something like that? Right. That's yeah. He was, uh, the, he was a partner manager in the, of the hotel. And, and the manager. Okay. Yeah, he gave a little intro at the party before Joel started giving out um, the T-shirts. I mean, the shirts for the right. uh, special yep. guests and stuff. So. I pulled that clip up. I was wondering if anybody knows because he it looks like he had a lot of the material that they used. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. I tried to get into local 802 and I don't see if I can walk in with thimbles on my fingers, they might let me in the door and they didn't let me sign up at all. <laughs> However, I did have one thing that turned my life around, if your father's mother did. And it started in 1964 because in those days in New York City, you can drink anywhere at 18 years old. Yeah. And you can cheat and get in at 17. <laughs> and your father's mustache was the best place to go for what I would consider 17 year old drinking and four, four, four play with women. Because the music always sent them over the top. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't meet my wife, Kathy until years later when she was working for, well, she started with Joel and then she went to work for John Marana. But I, after I met Kathy, I was an officer in the Marine Corps and the only place you could go in Greenwich Village in those days, now think of the year, 71, 72, the only place you can go in Greenwich Village in those days without being spit on by the people and the flower power was your father's mustache. I would walk into YFM on a Friday night and I was in civilian clothes at that time. I was a young officer and I had gotten out. And there was this wonderful, wonderful gentleman who had met me at that time. And his name was Joe Terra. Yeah. And I would walk in on a Friday night. I already had been half in the bag from dropping martinis up at the pig and whistle over by uh, Rockefeller Center. And I would walk in and he'd see me and he knew who I was through Kathleen. And he was doing it through his whole routine. Is there a Marine in the house? Is there a Marine in the house? And I'd say, yes, there's one over here. And he'd play the Marine Corps hymn. He'd do it's a sin to tell a lie. And we'd sing Ace in the Hole. And Kathy would come and then put me in a bed and put me to sleep for the night. That's how it <laughs> So with all the talk over the weekend with all of your association and affiliations, and Joel said, he only met me probably at the 25th reunion and then forgot about me except the checks I said when he ran for the uh, uh, failed uh, political things in Connecticut. Uh, when they went by the wayside, the checks were cashed, but nothing ever came after that. But anyway, you all forgot one person, and that was one person that I wanted to make sure was acknowledged, and that is the gentleman who brought me to your father's mustache, and that is Joe Terra. <laughs> Kathleen, of course, 40 years we've been together. Uh, I will yeah. you know, always, like she's up there on the wall, still has the greatest cams in civilization. <laughs> and uh, she um, she lets me do what I want to do. She let me run with this with Joel. Why she said, I don't know. But she started her career with an HBS Harvard Business School graduate from 1961, graduated 61, and she's ending her career right now with one of Joel's classmates. She's been with one of Joel's classmates now for 15 years. Closing up, closing up, closing up. Act three, the end, the finale. Joel, a piece that's been signed by all the members here tonight, and some will probably sign on more so, is the poster that we did. It is a pictorial of all the posters that you see here and all the pictures of your career and your times at your father's mustache. And it opens with, you put the times of our lives right under our noses. You were a great partner. I enjoyed every minute of it. I thank you for being a part of us.
good. Yeah. Hey, Hank, there's a, there's a ton of seen that. That's he was good. the guy who stopped us from taking pictures. Well, in Carnegie Hall. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did. I didn't. Wasn't trying to take pictures uh, in Carnegie, but I just shot video. But um, I, I was wondering if anybody knows how to get in touch with him. It sounded like he had a lot of material. The uh, from I Joel. I think he died. I he think died. he passed away a few years ago. There yeah. you go. Yeah, Joel passed away. away. Shouldn't bother asking him then, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to listen back again. Okay. Your mic is off, I think. That's a great picture you put up of the New York Club from outside. Yeah, I was just trying to find it. That was a good yeah. picture. Yeah. I got a lot of comments about it. The yeah. guy, Joe Sakala's wife, he's talking about Kathy. She worked with Murata in the Harry Lip office. Right. Kathy Good was like, she was like the. The My Girl Friday, she really ran yeah. out. She was great. That was Kathy Goodleaf. Yeah. 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 That's right. Anybody, Kathy. anybody have any contact with her? I haven't had any since I saw her at Carnegie. That's right. Oh, she was at Carnegie? I didn't remember. Yeah, she was at oh, Carnegie. That's the last I saw her. Okay. Was there. I don't know if she's still in the hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, listen, guys, I got. I need to take off. I'm not feeling real hot this afternoon. It's good to see you all. And Chris? Hey, Mike, good to see you. Good to see you, Mike. Good to see you, Mike. Take care. Take care, guys. All right. Well, Mike. Well, since Chris is here from Italy, I got a clip from Chris getting his award back in at the mustache reunion. But, you know, the, fun, the funny thing is that in, in Pittsburgh, the banjo is my secret life, but then here, cooking is my secret life. <laughs> but like everybody else, Joel, it, I mean, I relish the, the opportunity to tell you that you did change my life. And I told uh, Joel just after the concert that, um, you know, uh, I was a 19-year-old kid, uh, sophomore in college, and um, I could not have gone on to junior or senior year because I didn't have any money. And I went for a job as a waiter at the, at the New York Club, and uh, Keith Ramsdell, the great uh, Viking manager that we had, um, uh, said, I don't need any waiters, but if you can play the banjo, you're hired. And I said, oh, I can play the banjo. And, um, and I got up on stage, and, and Ron Beisel was the lead banjo player, and I got up there, and uh, he had a banjo, because I, you know, I tried to get out of it by saying, I don't have a banjo with me. And um, they handed me a banjo, he had one. <laughs> And I just followed what he did, but I didn't hit the strings. And, uh, <laughs> actually, that's been my secret all these years. <laughs> and, um, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, the, your father's mustache uh, took me in as if it were a family. Uh, I, I would eat in the afternoon with Russ. I would come to my classes and come down, and, and he would uh, cook food. And we had a, a, a sort of a family, and then we would play and enjoy the people who came there and, and enjoy how they enjoyed what we did. Um, and I learned so much. I, it was a maturing process and a, um, and a better education than I was getting up in the Bronx. Um, a, a much more complete education um, about what life was going to be like. Go ahead 25 years to 1987, and uh, Joel has this incredible event uh, up in Connecticut where he was sitting in some goofball theater and he's telling the story of Father's Mustache. They lift up the curtain. He says, what I want to give you is one more night in Father's Mustache. And the curtain went up and I just I couldn't believe what that was all about because I, I it was like being sent back to your youth, uh, in, in a, but with the with the appreciation that you have as an adult. And, and so it meant so much to me to go to that reunion and I thought nothing and no one will ever top that experience. Yeah. I was so wrong. <laughs> so thank you, Joel. You did it again. I don't know what you're going to do for my 75th anniversary, but uh, we'll probably be doing it together. <laughs> thank you. Hey. Yeah. That, was, that was great, Chris. Well done, Chris. Well, well done. I, I want to just point out while, while, we're, while we're on this whole reunion, I finally, finally, uh, oops. Oh, here's a picture. That was just a picture I put up on the invitation this week, and a lot yeah. of people put in about it. That's oh, yeah. great. 
That is a great shot. West 10th Street. Yes, sir. Traveler's Garage. That's where we kept the car. I kept my I kept my motorcycle there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Traveler's. It's oh yeah, oh yeah. I parked. So how'd you get the how'd you get the banjo on the motorcycle? Uh, it was tricky. It really was. <laughs> <laughs> I stood it straight up and I strapped it in. Yeah. A lot of us hung out on that corner right there. Sure. Yeah. Julius is down the street, and the, the Ninth Circle was down the street. And if you look down far enough, oh, there's God. the women's prison is down there too. <laughs> and that great little bakery on the corner. You go around that uh, building with the with the steeple. It was a great bakery. It was. Did they all get passes for what ladies' night? Yeah, right. The prison, the women's prison. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great shot. Uh, yeah, I've never went to the mustache in New York. You know. Anyway, um, you know what I was saying earlier. Uh, I finished the fifty the fiftieth fiftieth year reunion. I put it together as one long video. It has wow. everything from the lobby music to the upstairs music to the awards uh, afterwards and all the hobnobbing. And uh, I'm uploading it today. It, I'll put it on my Google Drive, and Tom will send everybody a link to it with our next uh, mustache invite. Super, so people, super. Everybody can download it directly to their own hard drive. Have the whole the whole enchilada. You know, How long does it run? How long it does it run? It runs an hour and fifty two minutes. Oh, so, well, that, was, that was everything. You know that all the the stuff that I've been showing, the little drips and drabs. Um, I put it all together from beginning to end. You know, and uh, nice job. Yeah. That's yeah, the thanks, 50th, bro. You talk about the fiftieth reunion or the Connecticut? Yeah, I have. I also, I have two thirds of the uh, the New Haven one done. Two two part two segments of it are already uploaded, and I'm just doing the the last one, the last day at the hotel because I did a lot of interviews. And one person still hasn't done the interview yet, and it's me. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, shooting, I'm shooting everybody else's interview. So I'm gonna Bonnie and I are gonna do a little clip. Tom and Emily did a clip and sent it to me because Tom wasn't there. But and uh, I edited it all together, and then the third part will be finished too. So I'll put that all on the Google Drive too, so you can get all all three days of the New Haven. Plus, I'll put that montage that I put together that Tom and I did um, with all the the photos from the from the years, okay. and anybody can access that. You know, cool. you know, download it, put it on your you put you can put it on your own. Um, Facebook page, if you want to, or whatever, you know. Chris, why don't you put all that on your website so it can be available for everybody? Absolutely. It'll be there. Well, not your website, you, you know, your Facebook page. The Facebook page, yeah. Right. Your father's mustache, yep. Yeah. It's yeah, all that's, yeah, that's it's got cool. most of the stuff on what you've been doing, putting on there. It's got just about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can put it on there. It's it bore up. On my Google Drive with the link, you can actually download the whole thing to your own computer. You know, I don't know if you could download it from Chris's uh, Facebook page or not. You can look at it, you know, but, you know, so. Actually, they're just YouTube links, Bill. Oh, they are? Yeah. Yeah. So unless, you, unless you have the method of, because uh, I can't download YouTube for some reason, you know. No, so, you can't. You know, um, you know, the only way I could do is if I had your your YouTube password, I could download it. Because they, they treat you like if it's your if it's your video you can download it but if it's yeah yeah you know, so but yeah. I think for us all we're gonna do is look at it anyway right. okay yeah mm -hmm. yeah so but anyway I'll, but with next week's um, um, invite you know invite. We, we'll have a we'll have a link that people could download it too you know the whole thing so anyway Ooh. so. You gonna video the next reunion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd be one of those uh, Ouija board type. Uh, yeah. Uh, videos, you know. I, I know we talked about getting together in New Orleans. You know, that's the place to be. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't think Joel will make it there. Hey, Roger. Before you came on, what we we're yes. talking about was right now, the Friday before Mardi Gras. Right. Back in the day, we had started the bands at 11 a.m. Right. So at this time on Friday before Mardi Gras, the club was packed. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. The club was three, packed. Three bands. 
three bands, 11 in the morning till four, four to nine, and nine till. Nine till, that's right. <laughs> nine till. Yeah, that's man. Cool. And and we, the, uh, right. Go ahead. We also, they have a big thing in, in New Orleans now, the, the greasing the poles up right. at the Wilson Esta. Right, I've, done, I've been to that many times. Well, we started that at your mustache right. back, in the, back in the late 60s. Fred and I came up with that idea. <laughs> he was <laughs> axle grease. Yeah, and using grease to grease the poles to stop the... You don't, do you know axle? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> when, people, when people tried to... They started greasing the poles. They, they would get really dirty. Yeah. yeah, and and then after uh, the mustache uh, turned into cinders, I worked at the Royal Sinesta Hotel as a beverage director for a while, and I told them, I says, uh, I showed them how to put up a beer stand facing Bourbon Street to make extra money. I said, you guys need to grease the poles out here. They said, what do you mean? I said, so people won't be climbing up on the poles to get up on your balconies here and bother people. Well, that's a good idea. So I, I started that at the Royal Sinesta. Now they have these beautiful strippers doing it. Let's get more attention. <laughs> but it's a big newsworthy event now. They bring the news. Oh, it's a big deal. It's, there. Yeah, it's, it's a on big the deal. internet. It's on local TV there. It's a, yeah. They're talking about people have to find a place to park to come and watch them do this. <laughs> parking must be a nightmare down there now. So. Well, I did the last 20 years at Arno's across the street, so I saw it every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. They were across the street there. Was yeah, Casberry did he own that also? Say what now? Casberry, Archie Casberry, and he well, owned his, the... his his family owns it. He's dead. Yeah, I know he's passed away. Yeah, but his family still owns it. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Yeah, he is a, he is an interesting guy. <laughs> Always smoking a big cigar. Oh boy. <laughs> when I fr when we first started working there twenty years ago, he came uh -huh. in and and had dinner, all right for the Sunday brunch, and he's at his table with his whole family, and we go up to his table to ask for requests. Yeah, we walked up to his table, and he had trouble with his eyesight, and his request was them their eyes, <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and and we played them their eyes, and he. Pulled in his pocket, gave us a hundred dollar bill, and every Sunday for twenty years, we got a hundred dollar bill tip from him <laughs> to play them that, their eyes. Well, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's a that's great nice. Game. Very giving. I think that this is a Mardi Gras photo, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Now, let me see. Let me see if I. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh Lord. That that was just a Friday night photo. <laughs> no, I thought that was a. I thought that was from Mardi Gras. I tell you what, I the, what was the cast name? Gretchen, Ludi, 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 Ludi was the one with the short legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I fell Ludi. in love with Ludi that night. Yeah, <laughs> Ludi, Ludi was keeping me warm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he used to stand up on his hind legs all the time. It's a good thing our floor was always clean. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Look, I was on a bandstand with Joel that that was the Saturday night before Mardi Gras. Yeah. And I couldn't wait for the for, for the next band to come on, obviously. <laughs> I remember yeah. Joel, Joel and Mike Gentry walking me to the back room. <laughs> no, I noticed you have an empty pitcher next to you there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't worry, Joe. Everything's okay. <laughs> and look, I got paid for that. Not much, but I got paid. <laughs> yeah, you got paid for having a good time. Good Mardi Gras. Yeah, this was another Mardi Gras band picture. I was just, I, I, I would have been better prepared. I would have had all the Mardi Gras pictures I could find ahead of time. That That's was the same movie. year. That was the same year, Mardi Gras of 73. And I remember when we'd schedule the bands, we'd schedule for, for the whole Mardi Gras season, Friday through Tuesday, one yeah. time where each club could put their own band together. So this night was the Denver band. But after that was all mix and match, you know, which was fun. Mix was and fun, match. Yeah. But the deal is, during Mardi Gras, 
it, it was very few and far between when you only see four guys up there because everybody want to sit in. We always had seven guys up there, eight guys. <laughs> And they, they look pretty they look pretty fresh there. They must have just started the shift. I think that was I think that was the the, the eleven o'clock shift. That okay. day. Yeah. Who who are the four guys starting on the left? Starting on the left, uh what De Dennis Condry was that? Yeah. Dennis, Dennis Condry, Mike Gentry, Bill Clark, and Gene Roof. Okay. That's Bill Clark, yeah, playing on Oh yeah, Bill Clark, sure. I, I recognize him now. Yeah. And you know Gene LeBeau, right? Sure. Very well. Sure. Yeah. yeah, well he was at the 50th reunion too. Yeah. Yes, he was, yeah. Okay. All right. Hmm. Yeah. I have to dig because I didn't sort him by Mardi Gras. I wish I would have, but I just have a bunch of old pictures I'm looking through. Hmm. Yeah. So, Tommy, you can be back in D.C. next week, or you know. Yep, All right. I get home Tuesday, so we'll be next week. We'll be ready. We can. I'll have more pictures up then. Oh, the Lord love us! That's great. That's great. You, you guys are doing just just wonderfully well with this stuff. It's terrific. Yeah, yeah. the bill's been running it from the last couple of weeks, and that's been you know because I've been traveling. Yeah. Well, yeah. I tell you what, we we had the best spot on Bourbon Street. Not only for Mardi Gras for all the time, but especially for Mardi Gras, we had the best spot, the best location, I think. It was called the Heart of the Bur Heart of Bourbon Street. Yeah. That was a good location. Couldn't beat it. I I remember you coming down one year. You went crazy. I was there two years, twice. Two years, one year. Danny and I, we we took you to parades. I remember being on. We had seats at Gallia Hall, and you went crazy trying to. I get remember there. that. <laughs> I remember that. But Mardi Gras were different in the 70s than they are now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is the view from our balcony. Right. It's a lot of people. <laughs> and look, that was light. Yeah, yeah. I can remember sometimes you, you basically, you, you couldn't decide where you wanted to go. You'd have to go where most people were going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you had to go with the flow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much, you know. And then and it, I remember that night when the side street splits and we had to bring, bring it down the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on this Facebook page, something about Bourbon Street, and they show picture, old pictures of Bourbon Street. And it's amazing how few pictures of the mustache they have that in that that Facebook page. They have mm -hmm. every other club, show bar and absinthe house. Roger, I think you're on that page too, huh? Yeah. But then there's very few pictures of the mustache exterior. Very few. I mean, mm -hmm. probably less than five that I've run across. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised with that kind of a location. You'd see, figure there'd be a lot more pictures. It is surprising. It's surprising. They have more pictures of before it was the mustache when it was the dream room. Yeah. 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 yeah that's from, that's a Mardi Gras band too. Um, it must have been after we stopped wearing vests. I mean, the waiters were, I was wearing suspenders. So um, I'm guessing, do you think 73, 74 or what? That's 73. 73. 73. Okay. Yeah. That's right. 73, the Mike Gentry. The, the regular band was Mike Gentry, Maynard. Um, you and Danny, right? Bruce, no, Bruce O'Neill. And uh, I don't know who was being paid to play the trombone. That's Either man, Maynard. Right? Maynard, I'm talking about the guy next to him. That's uh, Jancic, Tom Jancic from Denver. But mm -hmm. sitting in was Yoakum and Gene Le LeBeau. Yes. Oh, Ron Jancic, I remember him from Denver. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't see the tuba player, so I don't know. And I think Billy Blank is serving. Uh, yeah. Thanks. yeah. Who's the banjo player all the way on the left? Bruce O'Neill. Bruce O'Neill. Oh, I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Prince Valiant. I, I, I don't see a tuba player. I'm sure they got one. I just don't see, I see, I see I see part of a tuba, but I don't see anybody. I can't tell who's playing. He's behind you. Behind. Uh, uh, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yoko. Next to um, Yoko. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 Four trombones. How about that? Huh? Well. Yeah, that's four more than we had at the reunion. And, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, really. Couldn't get a trombone player. Well, if you have it in New Orleans next time, I'm sure Christine will come. She said she would. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. Yeah. I had a couple balcony pictures. I think I showed a couple last time. Rick, when with Mike Johnson and Rick was on were on the balcony, hmm. and I had a I can't find them. Let's see. It's hard to look at the little pictures, the little thumbnails, trying to figure out what I'm looking at. Anyway. Well, right now in the French Quarter, it's packed. And I know that because I spent the last 20 years working at Arno's, but there's a million parties, all the lawyers and and stuff like that. They all have their parties at the restaurants, and it's packed. Now, sure. yeah, right now the streets are packed. Did you didn't wear the Fritzels during Mardi Gras, Barry? I did. Okay. I did but uh, Bur Bourbon and Bienville, right outside the old Absinthe House, it's packed. You can't get through there right now. I know that yeah. for sure. When does Mardi Gras officially start? It's uh, we're 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 in what they call deep Mardi Gras right now. Um, it's Mardi Gras. It, <laughs> parades actually start. A couple of weeks before, but but you get to the Thursday before Mardi Gras, it's deep Mardi Gras, where there's parades to at least a couple every night. And then Saturday and Sunday and Monday, there's like multiple parades every day. Wow. And, get, and if you go down there, you're going to have glitter in your underwear uh, by the time you get home. It's just everybody's all shined up. I guess none of the locals go to Mardi Gras to Bourbon Street. Yeah, they do. You know, uh, really? I, I, don't, I don't go anymore, but. <laughs> I don't either, but they, the locals still go down there. Yeah. Really? Oh, it's like Mardi Gras uptown. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Right where the parade makes a turn on Napoleon and St. Charles. Yeah. yeah right by the, right where we went native. Fat, that Fat Harry's Bar. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's a little more tame down there, but if you're just wanting to see the sights and you've never been there before, uh, just... Uh, you know, it's down to the quarter, you know, or, or the Marini's really good too. You know, like if you don't want to see parades and just see people dressed strangely, you go out in the, in the, uh, <laughs> in the Marini on the other side of Esplanade. Um, it's just nice. Right before, right before COVID hit and Emily and I were down there and we're in, we're in Whole Foods and we're walking out and we could hear the parade down on Jackson and we just walked down and watched the parade. It was, yeah. So natural. Yeah. It's just parking and, and everything right now. And um, but yeah, on, on week on weekday night, on, I'm sorry, weekends, like if you catch some the afternoon parades with the kids and all that, uh, around like you were saying, around Napoleon before he gets to St. Charles, it's real nice, you know. Yeah. But these days if you can't get a spot on the street, which you can't, you have to park in a lot, you know what they charge in now? Sixty bucks. Boom. For what? 60 park bucks to park your car for three hours. And then you better have somebody watch it. <laughs> it's like New York. In a French court, it's 80 bucks. Well, I know that uh, they. I just got a note from uh, WYES, which is the PBS affiliate down here. Uh, they You can park in their lot for 30 bucks if you want to see Endymion, and all the proceeds go to benefit the station. It's right by City Park, so you can catch right. it right where it starts. Thirty bucks is not bad, especially if that's it's a not bad. Yeah, but that's, that's, not, that, that's at the beginning of the route. It's not by the French Quarter. Right, right. But it's it's more more tame down there. But the thing is, is this people they they camp out now. Like for Endymion, they'll 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 get out to where the parade route is, and they set up a, a battery of ladders and tents. And so if you just show up, you can't get you can't see anything because all these people oh, right. camp out the night before. To uh, to man their their turf, and it's That's not right. turf; it's the freaking neutral. We call it the neutral ground here, but it's the the median between the two streets, you know. And uh, they stake it out, you know, and they'll fight you if you try to get on their turf, you know. Yeah, it ain't worth it. Not just not for a pair of beads, you know. <laughs> but if you want, but it's you know, sometimes it's fun just to see the parade. But I just stay away from all that stuff, you know. But I remember when I first started at the Mustache, Bacchus was still running in the French Quarter. Wow. Yeah. Bacchus was still running down Bourbon Street. 
Well, everything got so big they couldn't get to the quarter they, they anymore. They couldn't. They couldn't turn the floats. They had to right, get the floats to make it to turn the floats. Um, right. but the first routes from Bacchus were right through the French Quarter. Right. Yeah. Hey Barry, is Danny during Mardi Gras still working at the hotel? He's he's working a lot. He's down there right now. Really? Yeah. yeah. He's down yeah, there. Danny right just now. had a birthday. He yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. I saw him two But he's down here right day. now. I mean, like I said, th right now is the busiest day for jazz musicians. Hmm. Right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Everybody I, I knew is working today. <laughs> <laughs> Are your fingers moving without uh, involuntarily? Say what now? Are, you, are your fingers moving involuntarily? Or are you like... <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Barry's retired. I'm retired. <laughs> you know. Seven weeks in running, and it's all good. Yeah. All good. That's right. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Anyway. Well, you know what? Uh, like, I don't know if I said this last week, but the crime has been going up down there. You know, I said, well, why am I doing this? It ain't for the money. You know, I was doing it because I like playing music and just to hang out with the guys. Sure. But shit, walking... To your car at one in the morning carrying an instrument and some asshole come out and mug you, I said it ain't worth it. No. Yeah. You know. Uh, and it's, that publicity spreads a lot too across the United States. Yeah. About New Orleans being unsafe and mm -hmm. where to park your car and you know, you just have to be so careful. Right. So I said I had enough. You know. Well th these days being mugged ain't ain't the worst of it. The worst of it's getting shot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. Every day there's something. Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. It's just well, awful. If a, and if you drive a Hyundai or a Kia in New Orleans, you might as well just leave your keys in it or, or leave the windows down because they gonna <laughs> they, they're gonna bust up your, your windows and take your car. You know, they somebody posted how easily it is to steal a, a Kia or a Hyundai. Uh the they and, and they put it on Facebook and I mean not Facebook, YouTube or, or uh, uh Twitter or something like that. And yeah. I think they're averaging like hundreds of them getting stolen every day. Mm -hmm. um, I, have a, I have a Hyundai, so I just, but I put a little uh, Volvo sticker on top of it. So uh, everybody thinks I have a Volvo. Now, the latest scheme up here is not stealing the car, it's stealing the catalytic converter because yeah, it's what they're going after. Yeah. Right. And yeah. It, and you can a good, uh, uh, I would say, a skilled thief can steal one of those things in about a minute. Yeah, and it's it's amazing. Uh, you know, you could <clears throat> how, how how successful they've been. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't can't you run your car without one though? It's awfully yeah, but, loud. Yeah, yeah, it's awfully loud because it's part of the muffler system as well. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I gotta go because my my, yeah, my wife my wife's birthday and I'm cooking so. Oh, happy Mardi Gras, everybody. Happy, happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras, everybody. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Tom. We'll see you happy next Friday. Happy Mardi Gras. Hey, Chris. Next Friday, guys. Okay. okay. Next, next Friday. Friday. Everybody. See All you are now. Adios. Take care, guys. Okay.